Welcome back to today's show. We're here with uh, world-renowned jazz drummer Dan Bodanis from the Dan Bodanis Band. Now, Dan, you're a wealth of knowledge. I know we have lots of young drummers and musicians listening in. Um, I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to see your take on this. I heard something very interesting from Jimmy Page. So, and I know you probably play a lot, a lot of times with uh, vocals and without, right? So. Jimmy Page said, when I first met Robert Plant and we just sort of connected right away, I kind of tuned my guitar to sound like his voice, almost to go hand in hand. Do you ever find out when you're drumming, if you have a real, you know, a real established singer in front of you, do you ever try to sort of blend, like almost sort of go hand in hand a little bit, or is it too hard for the drums? Yeah. That's a really good question and, and a great observation. And, and, you know, Led Zeppelin is, is a great band to kind of model for how to serve the music. So as a drummer, you were always in service of the music. I teach my 15 year old son, Sabian, who's an amazing drummer. I teach him lessons and I always say, you know what? It's not important to play licks or to play over and over or like repetitious patterns that make you look good or, or seem flashy. You're, you're there to serve the music. And so I think what Paige was saying was that he would serve the music in terms of complementing the vocalist to the best way possible. And, and so with the drums, that's the way it is. So for example, I'll give you a great example, uh, okay. coming somewhat from our community. Um, we had the longest running jazz gig in Canadian history at a place called Azure. It's a restaurant mm -hmm. in the Intercontinental Hotel at Front and Simcoe in Toronto. And we played five hours a night. And, you know, we played a certain minimum number of days each week, but often the Metro Convention Center was uh, attached to the hotel. So often they would have these uh, long conventions. And so my band would play five hours a night, seven nights a week. And, you know, just, just play, 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 play. So there was always celebrities coming in and out. I think, you know, we talked about the fact that Eric Braden, you know, superstar from uh, The Young and the Restless, Victor Newman, yep. he came in many times and he was, he became a very, kind friend, great supporter of the band. That's a, I'll share a story about him leading a standing ovation in a moment. But the one person that came uh, up on stage to sing with my band was the great Olympia Dukakis. Wow. And uh, I said to Olympia, I was really being really cheeky with her, you know, she, she's, she's Greek and I'm Macedonian. And I, and I said, you know, uh, I said, so great that, uh, you know, you brought so much fame to the Southern Macedonian community. <laughs> and oh, she gave me a slap in the face. She pinched me, uh, she said, I love you. And she's, you know, there's Olympia Dukakis, this, uh, you know, uh, amazing lady, just being so uh, accepting of my cheekiness and, and, and just fun. I was happy. She got it. She said, Dan, I want to sing Miserlou with your band. I said, okay, how about this? We'll do like a, like a Middle Eastern kind of, a, you know, um, almost like a belly dancing kind of a vibe. Not like the, the version of Mr. Lou uh, in the movie Pulp Fiction. She says, no, mm -hmm. forget about that. She says, and you know what the belly dancing thing? Yeah, you go to every Greek wedding. That's how they always play it. I said, you don't want it like that? She says, no. She said, you know what? So just follow me. I said, well, you got to give me some more structure than that, Olympia. Yeah. So she goes, I don't want any beat, not a steady beat. I said, okay, so we'll do it um, uh, rubato. She said, what does that mean? I said, rubato means without rhythmic accompaniment, but I'm going to make some noise in the background, you know, you know some cymbal swells, some tom-tom swells. She goes, perfect. That's perfect. So Olympia came up on stage with my band, no rehearsal, and she sang it, and she lifted the place. I mean, she got a standing ovation, and somebody recorded it, which I, I'd love to, because I actually saw the recording, and I heard the recording, um, I have pictures. It's, it's on my Facebook page, but uh, I, I'd love to have that recording because I, I never did get that. And after she was so cool, she said, Dan, post on Facebook, get the video out there. It'll help promote your band. She was amazing. So, you know, in terms of what Jamie Page was saying and vocalists yeah. and, and musically, we're all there to support the main voice of the music or the, the song itself. That is, Dan, you are a wealth of knowledge. Like, I love hearing stories. It's almost like behind the scenes stories, right? Like, yeah. how did you get there? Tell me your downfalls. Oh, I remember, you know, I obstacle, I overcame this. And then it's, it's all about sharing the success. So there's so many more things to talk about. Let's kind of move ahead. Can you share with me maybe, well, obviously a couple of inspirations in your life. Your first one obviously would be your dad. 
So let's, you know, obviously your dad's probably your number one inspiration when it comes to music. Is there another one? And share maybe a Toronto story with a fellow musician who you might think a lot of Torontonians would know of. Like a positive story if you have. So inspiration besides your dad, obviously, and then maybe a Toronto story with a fellow famous musician like yourself. Oh, there's so many to draw from. Um, probably one of the most um, impactful stories I could tell is the fact that uh, when I first met my wife-to-be, she's now been my wife for almost 36 years. Her name is Kelly. And when I first met Kelly, I saw her. I thought, man, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to marry her. And I was playing at the Constellation Hotel backing up uh, Vic Franklin. And Vic Franklin was an internationally renowned person. He had the Vic Franklin show. And at the time, that was a big show. He used to have people like Eng Engelbert Humperdinck, Tom oh, yeah. Jones, Diana Ross, uh, the Supremes, Glass Night, and the Pips. He had all those types of people on his show. And so I was lucky enough to be in his band. And when my wife walked in, she, first of all, we had dancing girls on the, um, or dancers, sorry, dancers on the show backing up Vic. And they both sang and they danced uh, like a Vegas style show. Yeah. And yeah. so one night there was nobody in the club except my student, a Greek uh, boy named Fotis. And he came in to watch me play. And we're playing the first set, which was just quiet bossa nova's, quiet background jazz. We play from 9 to 9.30, half hour break. And then 10 o'clock, bang, lights. And, the, you know, it's a big production, Vegas style, you know, Broadway show with Vic Franklin singing. And he was he was fantastic. He was like mm -hmm. a Canada personage. So only Fotis was in the uh, club. It was called the Woodbine Inn at the Constellation Hotel. Some people may remember that. Mm -hmm. And when Kelly walked in across the back of the club, this tall, beautiful, blonde dancer uh, in a miniskirt, legs for days, excuse me for being uh, um, so descriptive, but I, mean, yeah. I was back then, yeah. I went, I'm going to marry her. And so Fotis signaled to me, and he's going like this with his hand, like, did you see her? And I'm going, yeah, I saw her. <laughs> so when the set was over at 930, I walked up to Fotis and I said, uh, what'd you think? He goes, did you see that girl? I said, yeah, I told you I saw her. I'm going to marry her. He goes, no, no. I said, oh, yeah. So I get up and I start walking towards her and I didn't know her. And uh, Fotis grabbed my arm. He goes, where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm going to go walk. He said, I'm going to go meet that girl. I'm going to ask her to marry me. He goes, are you kidding me? And he's pulling me down into the chair. How great and is that? so I sit back down because he's literally pulling me. I said, Fotis, I'm just going to go. He starts sweating. He's getting nervous for me. For some reason, I wasn't nervous. I was, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I was, but um, it's just one of those things where I knew. And so then uh, he said, swear to God, you didn't know that girl. You don't know that girl at all. You've never seen her before. I said, Fotis, he answers no to all those questions. But I'm going to ask her to marry me. So I got up and I walked over to and sat down with Kelly and, and asked her to marry me. She didn't say a word to me. And just moments after the question came out of my mouth, all the dancing girls in our show, sorry, that's what we used to call them. I apologize. Yeah. All the dancers in our show came up, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. She stood up, didn't say a word to me, hugged them and disappeared into their dressing room. That was I, go back, I go back to the photos of table. He's soaking wet with sweat. He's so nervous for me. There's big sweat stains under his arm. His, his, he's, he's wiping his face with the napkin. He's pouring sweat. And he goes, what happened? I go, nothing. Did you talk to her? Well, I, I asked her to marry me, but she didn't say anything. What do you mean you asked her to marry? You, you're kidding, right? I said, no, no, I really did ask her to marry me. <laughs> wow, look at so that. Then, so then I found out two weeks later that she, Kelly was a dancer and an amazing singer. And so within six months, you know, well, within a few weeks, we were dating. Within six months, we were engaged. Two years later, we got married. But here's the thing I didn't input. Kelly is an amazing singer, an amazing dancer. She's what they call a triple threat. So sing, dance, and act. And she was a former Miss Dance of Canada, 1981, the very first Miss Dance of Canada. Wow. So she's what they call a triple threat. And, you know, in terms of inspirations, my wife would come on to a gig with my dad and she would sing the, you know, sing the daylights out of a, whatever song she had to sing, whatever the popular pop tunes were of that day at somebody's wedding. And then when uh, she was doing shows, she was doing big shows like Evita. Uh, she did um, uh, Crazy For You at the uh, Royal Alex. 
So, yeah. so Kelly auditioned for Crazy for You, and it's a show. It was a fantastic show. It was a Gershwin musical out of New York, and so the the Broadway um, uh, producer uh, came up to Toronto, handpicked the cast, and Kelly was picked because she was the only dancer in the world at that time that could do tap dancing on point. Now ballerinas would know that point dancing is where you dance on your toes, and it's very difficult, very strenuous. But the other side of it is, is Kelly could actually tap dance while on point and she had to do it on a table that was four feet high and she's on a, on a stage at the Royal Alex Ooh. theater doing this every single night. And they, they did this show for three years, eight shows a week, like two matinees a week. And over a million people saw my wife uh, in the show crazy few. It's a show about eight beautiful women dancing and singing and my wife was one of the those eight women who and so you know you ask me about people who inspire wow. me people who do amazing things my wife would be very very high up on on you know my list of as the most inspirational person i know that's a great that's a great story thank you so much for sharing that dan we're going to take a quick break and then i want to come back and i want to tie in because i know you played all over toronto canada the world the usa um maybe tying a little bit of the, the halton uh, connection and then we want to talk a little bit family so stay tuned and we'll be right back with Dan Bodanis and the Dan Bodanis band you're watching the Today Show Halton I'm Jay Stone and we'll be right back 